And there you go, after this uh, keyboard fiasco, uh, yeah, it's mainly my mistake what happened here. Uh, trying to rescue something that, yeah, probably was very hard to, to salvage. Remember about this connector, right? It's for me, it's very hard to fix, and all of them are somehow broken. So, the only idea I had in mind was to purchase another one. <laughs> um, this one is a French, I think, if not German. I don't know, keyboard layout, it's in mean condition. Probably had some issues. With the also with the same uh, keyboard with the dielectric and someone got I don't know a bit impatient when opening this guy because yeah that guy or that lady managed to snap these two screw inserts from the other side of the keyboard and I don't know if you will be able to see but the board is still inside with the screws and everything and the battery, I don't know what happened here. Well, the idea is to rescue the keyboard layout from here, the what I would call the dielectric, the mesh, and try to fix it and use the parts that I think I can reuse. And uh, yeah, have my super keyboard working. Now, before we continue, I would like to show you a little bit of what you are going to see in the next minutes because uh, for this particular keyboard I decided to create a methodology. Here in front of you you have the summary. Why? Well, my aim was basically to understand and fix the problem within the keyboard mesh without the need of separating any layer from this membrane. Uh, the observed issues right away straight out from the box was that the return was the right shift was the space bar don't work at all and then we have a strange behavior so never ending spaces were introduced when certain keys were, were pressed like n forward slash h l y and so on then methods that i have in mind in order to um, pinpoint the problem first of all was to swap controllers because i already have a controller from other keyboard Mm, that was not the issue, it's there. And then what we are going to do now in the next uh, minutes is to track the pins and the keys and create a little map to see each branch which keys uh, are hosting. And then, uh, of course, a final continuity test with a multimeter because in the end, these are two wires that when they are, you press a key, you are closing the circuit. So, and then uh, we proceed with a visual inspection looking for liquid, any rust or any dark spots as I learned from the previous video. The mapping should be able to help me with the visual inspection, let's say that way. During the process I will split the keyboard in two layers. I want to call them ribbon layer and non-ribbon layer. The ribbon layer will contain the connector that goes into the controller and very quickly my findings uh, I thought the problem could be in the connector. It's not there. And an action that I need to carry out is that the layers have to be separated and I need to refurbish some tracks because I, I couldn't really uh, find out or fix the issue from the surface, let's say. And my advice, again, if you are planning to purchase a keyboard of this kind and the seller advertises that there are a few keys that are not working just don't purchase it you will save a lot of time unless you want to go through this kind of adventure so as you can see in the picture here what i'm trying to do here is to track down the return key plus the right shift which are shown in green and then uh, in which mesh which layer of the mesh am i using the ribbon layer then all the keys shown in the picture are connected together and in green what I'm trying to do is to they are my starting points then finally in blue what I'm um, highlighting is to which pin they are connected to I did it for the return and right shift keys also the return key 
in the known ribbon layer. You can see how complex this is going to get. Plus uh, the right shift in, no, in the non ribbon layer, spacebar in the ribbon layer, spacebar in the non ribbon layer, and then with a the huge mess I had in mind, I decided to create a little matrix to see if I was making any sense of all the data. And as you can see here, from top to bottom, you see ribbon layer, non ribbon layer, non ribbon layer, ribbon layer, non ribbon layer, and all the keys that are associated to each branch and how they are connected together. So in orange, you can see they are connected together, they are connected together, and they are connected together. And I could quickly see that F6, 6 plus equal Y, H, and N, they are connected together. And when I press one of these ones, I get random spaces. Well, we are getting somewhere. And <clears throat> at the same time, all of these keys, or one of these keys corresponding to one of the branches, was connected to the other branches. So there is a relation. So, of course, I need to proceed with a continuity check of the non-working keys. In this case, I'm trying to track down the return plus the right shift plus the spacebar. What can I expect when I press a key from the multimeter? The multimeter will say beep, which means we have a healthy track, uh, no beeps, or uh, resistor value means that there is some issue happening there. So in the table, you can see that um, and I specify the pin for each of the keys. The return, for example, is 11 and 19. And when I execute my continuity test, I didn't get any beep. However, for the spacebar, I got a beep only with the middle pad. Mm, then, my conclusion is that there are open tracks for sure for the return and the shift keys, and I will need to see how to fix it and that the spacebar partially works. Plus, it introduces this strange behavior. Then I try to replicate the random behavior. So what can I expect when I don't press any key? Well, I decided to look at the problem from the opposite side, of assuming that when no key is pressed, I will get a beep. So when I press uh, spacebar plus N or H or Y, I am getting a continuous beep, that's weird, but when I measure continuity, I get a certain resistor value. There is something wrong there. I couldn't really conclude what. And then, uh, of course, what can I do now? Locate these keys and also look for any kind of visual indicator. For example, rust or this dark color that indicates that the tracks are deteriorating. And I could find around the H key and um, towards pin 25 that there were some kind of decoloration there. You will see it in a video in a second. And finally, how am I naming this connector? Well, if you take your mesh and you place it the same way I have it in the picture, so on the right hand side you will see pin number one and on the left hand side pin number 30. So now, Let's continue with the video. Well, here I am again. I have drill holes where the spot weld joints are created. I have used between 2 and 2.5 millimeter diameter drill bits. Now I have to remove all the keys and also this butterfly mechanism from all of them. Otherwise, all the three layers of the uh, keyboard are stuck together. So let's get to it. I am here with my setup, checking the spacebar and the continuity between pins 22 and 25. So if I press here, this is supposed to be the spacebar. Perfect. What about the other sides? Yeah, it doesn't work as nicely. Now checking the return key, pins 11 and 19. You have it here, okay. Just watch the multimeter. There's a resistance. This key here is supposed to be the N, right? When I press it, you get this, and like 60, almost 67 ohms resistance, which is weird. But if I, play, if I press the spacebar and N, 
we got full continuity, which I think when I do this, I'm doing a spacebar. So yeah, there must be some track connected here. Okay, now with pins 16 and 25, it's supposed to be Y, so this one, you can hear it. Same value, well, roughly same value. And now, if I press with the spacebar, this one alone doesn't work, but these two, they do. I'm gonna proceed with visual inspection. Something is telling me that the branch with the spacebar, H, N, and Y, this weird branch is it's producing part of the issue. The other one is the enter and the shift, left, uh, right shift, which this keyboard is upside down, so it should be here and here. Um, these are causing the problem. So for this problem, there must be a track there that is not working. For this problem here, I found this. It looks like a little bit of rust. And it's this is letter H. This is N. H. If I take my failure keyboard, uh, we can see that here, this is my N. There's a branch coming up here and goes up to this connector here, which is the one exactly as the one we have right here. And it looks like the issue is right here for this um, spacebar issue. Okay, after visual inspection, I have to do what I didn't want to do, which is... Uh, separate the layers and try to rebuild the tracks again but there are a few things I would like to tell you about first is this ribbon don't bend it too much um, all the connections will break this is super fragile second is these connection pads you have three in the whole keyboard two here and one here these connections, they are glued. So when I, I'm gonna test a cyanoacrylate, um, like super glue and also uh, some hot glue. I'm gonna try to, to put a little dot in this testing keyboard and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna press hard to see if the, the glue will, will glue the area because here I can see a little bit of a, of a recess here like there was a machine pressing till the moment the glue is dried and then after that i will try to test the connection to see if everything works by using this um, test bench i know i said i would like to try with glue with two different glutes with a cyanoacrylate and also with some hot glue in this case what i've done is first try with the hot glue and make a mistake so put a big blob here and then try to remove it which I managed, no problem at all. It was very easy, so I liked it. Then, this is a huge blob. You need a very small bead here, but very tiny bead, and then you need to make pressure. So I tried to use something round like this, but then I ended up using this edge of this pen. So, first, you apply on the layer you want to apply the glue, just apply it. Wait for it to dry, no problem, because once you place this one on top with an alignment tool, I'll show you in a second, or without. Uh, you need to use your heat gun, then you apply heat for some time, just a little bit, and then with this one you start rubbing, so all the glue uh, that is in between the contacts will go away, the contact will remain uh, together, and the glue will stay in between the contacts and around. What's the outcome? From this track number one here, it goes directly to this where it's here and then where this uh, prop is and then there's a dot here marked and then this is one layer and on the other layer it just goes um, here, right here, okay? So if I do a quick test we do have a method so I'm more confident now Let's say you made a mistake, you want to remove it, you want to try it again. Mm, don't try to separate these two layers. Just apply a little bit of heat here and everything will come out. Hey, hello, this is me sometime later. I must say, I really like the idea of, of placing everything. You apply a little bit of heat, you rub a lot with some sharp, not very sharp, 
object but plastic made so you will not tear this apart and once you rub uh, quite a lot if, if you are not happy you can apply a bit more heat and do the same I've checked all the connections they are all working perfectly keyboard is wide open I'm trying to finish this job within a few hours so there is no issues with oxidation or whatever I'm using gloves uh, so there's no transfer of of uh, yeah any kind of fluids from your body like sweat from your fingers and it helps this thing to oxidize uh, also um, I haven't this time I didn't want to split the two membranes membranes in one go so because I managed to locate the branches that I had to work on what I did is just uh, unglued them till this area almost and I know, yeah, this is not very clean, but this other side, uh, I, I don't have any other way to support this. So the other side is leather, ah, who cares? And I found one thing, there you go, it's right here. It's a broken connection. Yeah, so whoever wanted to open this keyboard, uh, yeah, I don't know what he or she did, but yeah, there is this, there's some damage marks here and this one. That's why I didn't have any kind of connection for the enter key and also the right shift key. I think this problem is solved. Then for the H key, I don't know if you will see it properly, but H and an older branch. I am still checking stuff, but you can see here, this one here, they are like rub. It feels like they, there was some rubbing. And, and yeah, just clean everything with IPA. You can clean it with a, just a cotton swab. You see, this one looks like rubbing, the result of rubbing this one too. This I think this one is um, N and this one is H. So yeah, there's some rubbing. I cleaned everything. It looks like everything is looking fine. The connections, everything is good. Even the one that is, you don't see this right here in the, in the rear side. Uh, I cleaned it also with the IPA and it looks like everything is working. Now, I'm gonna check all the branches as I, show you before and then I'm gonna proceed with a proper test okay I have finished checking almost everything except the FN keys because I know they are working and I checked that before and they are all still let's say uh, manufactured glued so I'm gonna leave it like that the rest is all working and I'm glad I found all the mistakes I didn't fully split these two membranes you need to be very careful with the rim connector which is below here um, actually, I can do this, I can show you. Very careful with this connector, once you bend it 90 degrees, you break all the connections. Don't fold it, don't even bother. Um, so, in my case, everything is well aligned, I just need to press it nicely, put these uh, two glue uh, beads here, press a lot, and that's all. Alright, time to apply some glue. Look how I do it. Just a little dot. And forget about it. And here is the same, a little dot. Now it is all dry, but we just forget about it. Just do this, place it. Let's just leave it as it is. Yeah, there are two big bumps here. We will apply a little bit of heat and make some nice and even pressure with a sharp ish object made of plastic if possible don't use a blade or things like that now this one feels like factory it's like a bump it's like a like a recess and this one's still very rough so what I'm going to do is uh, you will see me how I will apply some heat and then I will try to uh, m actually make the contact between both layers go for a test I am glad to report and I'm gonna emphasize I'm super glad to report that this thing is working no issues no nothing I'm gonna deep check all of these parts but um, I'm gonna give you a demo in a second huh? everything is connected so this is this is basically if you are wondering what the magic keyboard 2 is this is basically the magic keyboard 2 battery controller and um, a very um, 
over engineer uh, membrane and of course the nice uh, aluminium frame and super nice keys and all the stuff um, so I'm gonna go uh, and of course it is nothing repairing that thing is nothing compared to this one uh, this one was in a very very bad condition and it's still doable but it requires more time this one has been a piece of cake compared to the other one but at least I have developed a methodology that you have now so if you want to give it a go please don't remember me when you're doing it um, just <laughs> I am not responsible of any <laughs> issue that happens or even if you f you are fed up at some point <laughs> because I, I don't recommend it Here I am with the first key of the whole set. I know this is bumpy, but it's okay. It's just overall deformation. Also, I'm using a book, so we actually read an offset with the table and the ribbon is not, which is here. And the ribbon, which is here, is not suffering. Now it's time to um, place the back cover and do a small mock test to see if all the keys are still working. And then we continue with the final uh, assembly. Yes, I came back to the drawing board. It didn't work. I'm being honest. Some of them worked and the rest didn't work after I placed all the keys. So I have to go back <laughs> and redo this again. What happened? Well, I was using, as you remember, like a sharp but not very sharp object made of plastic. So I could create a little bit of pressure here and then remove the glue from these little fingers. Um, so it could have, you could have a a good contact. However, when I tried to remove this uh, layer again, you could see that the glue was all over the place, but here, so here there was a bubble because I pressed too much. So I have to find a way to, at the same time, press all these little tracks here and make sure that the glue dries around it, but not between the top and the bottom layer. In the end, this is my second fiasco even though i must say i was very 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 close as you saw that uh, to make everything work and it looks very promising few tips if, if you're gonna try this because i already give up i think i need to move on on something else but i know how to fix it in the future so focusing on these parts here which is i would say the main concern the rest with the conductive ink should be fine once you apply glue and you need to make some pressure, you could develop a tool or you can buy a comb for animals. And the spacing, I figure, is very similar to the spacing you have here. So if you modify that comb, you could press and at the same, and at the same time <clears throat> ensure that the glue is removed from these tracks. On the other side, you could use something like this tool. I just curved this slightly so you can see. So. What you do is you apply the glue, some heat, and then you, you rub up and down a little bit, or you just need to make a connection. So if you press a little bit and you ensure that there is a section of that connection that is going, is going to be actually connected, so conductive, that's it. Last tip is, what was the main reason why I gave up here? Well, I applied glue too many times here, and I had to remove it too many times to the point that, as you can see here, the tracks disappeared. I tried to rebuild the tracks. Then the the spacing is very, very, very narrow. So yeah, I mixed tracks and everything got unglued, and then we glue on top. It was just a mess. So you have, I would say, two to three trials. Otherwise, trash it. Now, how would I have proceed in order to assemble this part back? This is going to be my mainframe. Assuming that we have the mesh here with all the keys inserted already, you just put it upside down like this. I'm going to just remove this part because it's going to be... Okay. 
you just put it this way. Uh huh. Yeah, but before everything was spot welded. Now what do we do? Well, you can use either um, hot glue, a bit per hole, should be fine, and on the edges too, a little bit, and remove the excess, the burr itself, or you can use epoxy. And yeah, everything will be kept in place literally forever. So the only issue I have in mind with epoxy is that if something else happens in the future, well, you will need to buy a new keyboard or because epoxy most of the times uh, will be unglued at around 250 degrees and by that time all of this rubber is gone. So what about reliability? Yeah, reliability depends on how good <laughs> the technician is, I would say. Okay, after this one, the rest, so this part here, which is now against plastic, it's all glued and you can see here a little bit of glue. I think you can skip it or you can apply a little bit of double-sided tape here and that's it. If not, you are not happy, apply some hot glue. I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat on top. That's gonna do the job. And for the bottom case, it's going to be exactly the same. How I said this, I'm gonna close this project here and see you in the next one.